friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're doing well. Welcome to another video and welcome to another recommendation style video. Today I will be talking to you about the authors that I have read the most books from and which one of those books are my favorite from each of those authors. So we have 11 authors and 11 books to talk about today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So my top read author might come as a little bit of a surprise to you because it's not Sarah J. Maas. My number one author is actually Tate James. I know, I know, I have read a total of 18 books by this author. And my favorite book of those 18 has to be Kate by Tate James. This is the fourth and final book in the Madison Kate series and just a book that brings me so much joy. I have reread this book three times now and every time I get to this book, it makes me so happy. I love nothing more than to see couples that are still struggling with their shit, but also finding happy in the midst of all of that crazy. And this is definitely a book that t does that to a T. You have these characters that have gone through so much and they are coming to the tail end of their story, still going through a ton of crap, but also finding happy moments in there. And there's nothing that I love more. Cody Steele and Archer are still some of my favorite men to read about. They treat Madison Kate so well and want nothing but the best for her and it's just so heartwarming to see them literally go through hell and back to make sure that she gets what she needs and that she's safe and happy and well cared for and I just love that about Tate James's men in particular but this series just does something to my heart that makes me so happy and warm and gushy. Up next we have three authors that I have read 12 of their books so I'll go ahead and start with the most obvious. I have read 12 of Sarah J Mass books and my favorite of them is no surprise to anybody and that is of course House of Earth and Blood. I love the first book in this series. I love book two, don't get me wrong. I gave it a five out of five stars. It is one of my favorite sequels of all time. But book one mm, is just chef's kiss. It is the book that really does speak to my soul and all of its entirety. I have a tattoo specifically with a quote from this book in it and there's nothing that compares to this book for me. I would sell my soul to read this again for the first time. I love this book so freaking much. Um, I'm not going to really explain the synopsis of this because I feel like it's talked about a lot and it's kind of hard to explain without giving away too many spoilers but I personally think that this is one of my favorite if not my favorite books I have ever read. I have had some books come really close to taking this out of the top spot but just something about the emotions that Sarah J Mass writes with her characters and the way that her characters feel so real and tangible just makes it so hard for me to move this out of its number one position. I love 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 everything about this book down to the love interest and the friendship groups and the extreme topic of grief and acceptance and moving on that is just so hard to capture in a book but Sarah J Mass does it so freaking well. Everything about this book and this series speaks to my soul but this one in particular does something really special for me. Up next let's talk about Caroline Peckham and Susan Valenti. I have also read 12 of their books across several series that I have yet to finish a single one because nothing is complete and or there are not enough audiobooks out to complete their series. But that is a topic for another day. My favorite book that they have written so far is definitely The Reckoning. This is the third book in the Zodiac Academy series. It is the only book out of the 12 that they have written that I have given a full five stars to. And I don't know why this particular book stood out to me in the entire series more than the rest, but I really just feel like the third book was the book that they were finally finding their stride in what they wanted these characters to look like and to act like and to be and what they wanted their relationships to come out to. Um, I really loved the exploration of these characters and their motivations as well as how far these friendships as well as these romantic relationships could go in regards to um, longevity and how much these characters were really willing to sacrifice in order to get to where they are. Granted the series has changed so much since then however the third book just did something really really special with these characters that made me fall in love with the story as a whole and also made me keep reading. But the third book was the one where I was like okay if I don't fall in love with this I'm moving on and the third book gripped me took me to a whole new level and I was very excited to move on with the series. That being said, I still haven't finished it because it's not quite complete yet and there is not an audiobook out for the eighth and final book because it hasn't been released. So it'll be a while before I finish up the series, but book three definitely has a special place in my heart. And the last author that I have read 12 books from is TJ Klune. This one was really, really, really hard for me to choose because I have read 
so many fantastic J. Klune books and I have not given anything less than five stars so this was really tough for me to choose but I ended up going with Brother Song by T.J. Klune, the last and final book in the Green Creek series. I think I have found out that the last books in the series really have special places in my heart because you've grown to love these characters so freaking much and want nothing but the best for them and to see them get a what seems like a happy ending at the end of their story is just so fucking satisfying and this series is no exception. I love every character in this series with all of my heart and soul. They really have carved out a place in my heart and TJ Klune really knows how to write a story that really rips out your soul and then puts it back together in little bits and pieces with a few jagged pieces missing because there's no way you could be whole after reading this series. But I just loved these characters and I also loved the relationship that bloomed in this particular story. I won't divulge who this story is about. It does follow one of the brothers it's Carter, but um, his love interest is something that you've had to kind of experience throughout the story, so I'll leave you to figure that out. But I just loved how much these characters are willing to do whatever it takes to be with their person, and they go through hell and back to get to where they are at the end of this book, and it just feels so rewarding and so worth it and so worthwhile that I just couldn't help but love this one. It was very hard for me to choose between this one and the first book in the series, but I definitely feel like this one has... A special like place in the roster of books in my life that I feel like I could go back to every time and still love it just as much the first time, the second time, and the third. Okay, now we're moving on to Marissa Meyer, who I have read nine books from. And this book is no exception from the past books that I have chosen, and that is that it is the last book in a series. And that particular series is the Renegade series by Marissa Meyer. Supernova is a book that will forever haunt me to this day. I loved it, don't get me wrong, 5 out of 5 stars, I think it's a fantastic ending to this series, but also has one of the biggest end of series cliffhangers that we may never get the answers to. So that hurts my soul a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. But that being said, I loved the way that this series ended. There were so many twists and turns throughout this series that kept me on the edge of my seat and made me keep wanting to pick up the books time after time because there were so many answers that I wanted and I definitely needed to see how these character dynamics played out. I loved the way that Marissa Meyer structured the series and made it feel very high stakes while also keeping the characters close to the vest. And I just felt like she did a great job with making these characters feel real and tangible while living in this weird sci-fi fantastical landscape. It just really, really worked for me. I think Marissa Meyer as a whole is a fantastic writer and she does really wonderful character work, but this series just has something special that I really love. I have heard many people say that they didn't like the first book in the series, which is absolutely strange and unfounded to me, but I loved how chaotic and crazy this world was while also being filled with humor and love and wonderful characters. Everything about it was great, but book three really is something special. Another author that I have read nine books from is Miss Katie Robert. I love her books. I have read several of her books over several different series, but this one is definitely my favorite so far, and that is Wicked Beauty. This is the third book in the Dark Olympus series, uh, the one that I have read the most recently, but honestly, it was a toss-up between this one and Neon Gods, and I couldn't figure out which one I liked more. However, I think that the uh, polyamorous relationship dynamic between Helen, Troy, and Achilles worked a little bit better for me than the Hades and Persephone retelling. That being said, you also have a little bit more of a plot in this book that really drove the story forward, which I felt like Dark Olympus was missing just a little bit, and maybe that's the reason why I ended up picking this one over that one. But like I said, this is a Achilles, Helen, and Patroclus retelling, um, and it also features a competition and a game for the title of Ares, which really pushed the book itself forward in regards to plot and kept you on the edge of your seat, but it really also messed with the dynamics of this relationship in a big way that made it feel very high stakes and you didn't really know how it was going to play out. Granted, it's a romance, so in the end, do you really know how it's going to play out? Yes, but I love a romance book that keeps me guessing from page one all the way to the end, even when I know that it's supposed to have a happily ever after. Um, and I think that Katie Robert did a great job at balancing the plot of the story, but also the romantic interests of the story all while doing a polyamorous relationship, which is not an easy thing to write, because now you're dealing with not just two character personalities and traits that are supposed to work together, but three that I think work together seamlessly. I personally loved how strong and badass Helen was against these two very strong individuals, while also showing weaknesses in all characters that made them have personality 
and real depth. I really enjoyed this book and I cannot wait to read the rest of the books in the series. All right, we are moving on to authors that I have read eight books from, the first one being Elle Kennedy. I have read books from three different series of hers, but the one that I wanna talk about today is The Goal by Elle Kennedy. This is the fourth and final book in the original quartet of the Off Campus series. And I feel like this book really found its stride in balancing a romance with real life stuff. And I talked about in a previous video that I really enjoy books that know how to balance real life shit with a romance that can feel like it's otherworldly and like you're outside of reality but still feels real and I think that this book does this very very well. Um, you find out in the third book in the series that Tucker and Sabrina's life is going to change forever and it really messes with the dynamic of their relationship. They aren't really in a relationship to begin with at the beginning of this book but they want each other in ways that they don't know that they, that they can have them and it just feels like this very big push and pull with really high stakes in regards to their relationship. I won't divulge too much because it is a big spoiler for book three and I don't want to give it all away, but the big change in their life has really created a rift, but also a really big connection between the two of them that only they can share. And it's a really beautiful story where you watch these characters want so much, but really not knowing how to fight for what they want and not knowing if they can balance everything that they want with now what they have to do in their lives. And I just found it so unbelievably satisfying to watch their relationship come together. I love these characters. They're both strong characters individually, but even stronger together. And I just loved it so much. I need to reread the series, but I definitely need to reread this book in particular. Another author I read eight books from, we have J.R. Ward. Um, I read all eight books in the one particular series, and that is the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. So I had to pick a favorite from that. And the one that I picked is Zadis' story. He is definitely the most scarred, troubled, traumaed character of this series so far. He had a very, very, very troubling past. Huge trigger warnings in this book for sexual assault. So keep that in mind if you are going to move into the series. This book is definitely a darker one, but I just really love Zetas as a character. He's very complex. He's very hard to love, but he's also very hard to please. But seeing him find love in his own way that makes sense for him was so beautiful to watch, but also watching him struggle with how to give that person what they need without knowing how to get over the demons of his past was just so refreshing to read, especially in a fantasy romance capacity. I thought that it was really, really well done. Again, a very hard read, a very harrowing read, but definitely very, very worth it. Moving on with our last author with eight books, we have Shauna McGuire. I have read several books in the Wayward Children series. I have read this book and I have DNF a book by them. So definitely a large array of things that I could have chosen, but I definitely went with Middle Game by Shauna McGuire because I felt like this is the most different out of all of the books that I have read by this author and the one that stands out the most. This is a very complex story about two twins that were created to ascend to godhood by these people that wanted more out of life. And you're dealing with Roger and Dodger, one of whom is really skilled in numbers, the other really skilled in language. And they have a very interesting relationship. They're separated at birth, but are able to communicate with each other across the world. Um, and you follow their timeline as they're really young kids getting to know each other all the way through their adult life as they try to figure out what part they play in the roles that they have in the world that they live in. Um, it was so complex and creative and crazy at times, kept me guessing um, on the edge of my seat every single page, and it was just so much fun to read. Definitely a book that I cannot wait to do a reread of. All right, and we're moving on to our last two authors that I have read six books from. The first one being Katie Wismer. I have read six of her books, and my favorite is Wicked Souls. This is the second book in the Marionette series, a series that I have come to absolutely love and adore. I have read everything pretty much that Katie has published except for her last poetry collection, so this was another one that was really hard for me to choose, especially because I have given all of her books five stars, but this one definitely stands out to me. I feel like she is gaining her stride in the series and taking it in the direction that she really wants these characters to go. Plus, it helps that this book had the first spicy scene in the series that I absolutely 100% needed, so I really love that book for that. I really think that these characters are really changing and growing and becoming who they are supposed to be in this moment in time, and it's been so refreshing to watch. I love Reed and Valerie as a couple, but also as individual characters. I feel like they have a lot of room to grow and change in a good way, and I'm excited to see what she does with the series. Again, this book left off on a cliffhanger, so I'm very excited for book three that comes out next month. So best believe I'll be reading this as soon as I can. I'm waiting for my signed copies to come in, but as soon as I get them, I will be reading it. And the last and final author we're going to talk about today is Miss V.E. Schwab. I have read six of her books, and my favorite 
I feel like is a lot of people's favorite and that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I am among the people that absolutely will die hard for this book because I think that it is fantastic. I love the fact that it's a standalone as well and the atmosphere of this book is completely unmatched. I think this book was so perfectly written and the right timing for when it came out. Everything about this book screams perfection to me and I just loved every aspect of it. It made me cry. I care for these characters so much and watching them struggle so hard but also want nothing but the best for each other was just so beautiful to watch. I love the dark entity that's written into this book, making it feel very atmospheric and creepy while also having this edge of whimsy and melancholy that you want the best for these characters, but you know that's not always the way that the world works. And I just loved it. I think that Addie LaRue as a character is very complex and um, confounding, but also, you can see a lot of yourself in this character as she is struggling with loneliness in her life and wanting um, a real place to put her foot down and to create um, something for herself that is going to last a lifetime. And I feel like that's something that you can relate to in any aspect of your life. Most people want to create a footprint that people are going to remember. And I feel like Addie LaRue is a big staple for that. But she experiences it and sees it in an entirely different light because of her circumstances. And I just really enjoyed it. I love the relationship in here. The romance was just so beautiful. And the ending of this book where everything kind of comes together is one of my favorites that I have ever read. So I'm so glad that I read this one and it's definitely high up in my favorite books of all time. Alrighty, that is the end of this video. I am very curious to hear down below if you have read any of these books and if they are also your favorites from these authors or if you have other authors that you have read a bajillion books from and which one really speaks to your soul. Please let me know all of that stuff in the comments below. I would love to chat with you. But that's the end of this video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And of course, leave any comments, questions, suggestions in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.